Good evening and welcome to Whiskey Lover Society and welcome to a very special Father's Day episode. Absolutely, Father's Day. <laughs> now I can tell you, um, I think if you have a father that loves whiskey, um, Father's Day, Christmas Day, um, birthdays, it's quite easy. Um, no problems of finding a gift, grab a bottle of whiskey. Um, and um, this Father's Day, we thought it was an excellent idea just to do a little bit of a father-son or maybe for you a father-daughter uh, quick review. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity. I just opened up my early Father's Day gift, a nice bottle of Jack Daniels. So I'm quite looking forward to it. And, um, and I do a little bit of a challenge. And I challenge all the YouTubers or whiskey review YouTubers to make a Father's Day uh, video with your daughter or with your son and um, give your opinion, uh, something that um, do they like, maybe you like it, maybe nobody likes it. So the whole video is all about a different taste. Um, one family, uh, what does my son taste? what do i taste and i think the big thing that we will take out of this is that not everybody tastes the same and not everybody's got the same memory with regards to what they are tasting so the challenge today we open up the bottle we make a little bit of a b-roll so that you can see the opening of the bottle and um, we each pour ourselves a nice little dram and we took five minutes to write down our thoughts on the whiskey and of course after the five minutes we are going to discuss what we both know, we both taste and um, if we like it or not. So a little bit of a fun and we are going to release it a little bit earlier so that it gives an opportunity to the other YouTubers. Sunday is Father's Day so put your video up Tag me in your video so that we can have a little bit of fun for Father's Day, a very special day. So I'm going to give my bottle to this, my son. Of course, um, his eyes are much better than mine. <laughs> so he can give you a little bit of information on the bottle itself. So we have a bottle of Jack Daniels Single Barrel. It is a 100 proof and I believe it's advertised as cask strength. It's a, a limited edition run, I believe that they do with uh, each batch they release it in a different strength so this specific batch is 100 proof and um, no real reason why I bought this for you other than the fact that I know you don't have a lot of American whiskeys bourbons on your on your rack so I thought I'd get you a little bit of a, a special Jack Daniels just to spice things up a little bit and of course it is a way cool bottle yeah it is very nice <laughs> and it's heavy <laughs> i think that is one of the heaviest bottles in my collection and at the back any information on the back uh it just says travelers exclusive not entirely sure what that means so travelers exclusive is supposed to be mostly in duty-free shops but mm. i think after the p pandemic there's a lot of this duty uh, free shops are also selling this stuff uh, online in the various uh, uh, online stores. So um, no longer just for the duty free shops. And um, I was quite happy to see this one. Definitely not uh, a big collector of the uh, American whiskies or the bourbons. So I'm quite looking forward to nosing and tasting and give my opinion, well, our opinion on mm. it. So with that, um, I, I will start off and I will do a little bit on the color and um, but I would love to hear my son's note and he's got his own notes so um, it's good that he can't cheat and try to steal <laughs> my notes on it so the color um, from what I understood about bourbons they never add any color to it so the color what you see um, that is how it comes out of the barrel absolutely lovely dark amber color to it a little bit of a viscous oily if i move it around in the glass long thick oily legs forming slowly running down the glass so a little bit of an oily one so that is me on the color i'm going to give the first nosing notes over to my son all right uh 
I got a very, like, the first thing that hit me was, like, dried apricot or dried peach. Like, immediately I smelled that, and it was, like, that very sweet but almost, like, dusty sort of smell. Um, I got brown sugar or molasses, I think, was very standout for me. And then I noticed after I smelled a little bit more, every time I take that, that, that sniff, that initially I would get, like, a sharp green apple type of, like, a... Uh, not exactly a citrusy, but like a freshness of like a green apple. When you bite into it, you get that. I uh, sort of get that smell initially. Um, and then I got almost like the smell of rubber. I don't know if you got that as well, but it's just like, not like a uh, compressed air smell, but like actually like a rubber mat that you would like play on the playground with. No, quite, quite interesting um, listening to his nosing notes. Now, for me, the first thing that I did pick up, and maybe you can pick up your glass and see if you can find something that's similar. Um, I can tell you that we didn't find anything similar. Oh. Well, the first thing that I did pick up is the alcohol. Mm. Now, the alcohol has got a, a very youthful uh, uh, notes to it. And the first thing that I pick up is nail polish remover. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So they definitely that that stingy uh, um, high alcohol. It is fifty percent ABV. So that's the first thing that I that I get, especially if you agitate it a little bit, and you stick your nose in too deep. That you get that um, that nail polish. Um, also, maybe going into the people that doesn't polish their nails, a little bit of a paint finish. Mm. So that I got. So a sweet, spicy note that I get. And then I get caramel. Mm -hmm. And I get a little bit of a vanilla. Like a vanilla extract. Like a deep, dark, rich vanilla extract. I think I get the vanilla extract more than I get the caramel. Yeah. And then I also pick up a little bit of a, a, the woodiness of, of the alcohol. There's a, um, almost like varnish. Like a, um, a deep, dark, rich uh, um, varnish that you put on furniture. Mm. That, that maybe, and it's also got a little bit to do with the, the nail polish remover that I get. It reminds me a little bit of a varnish. But the dried fruit that you pick up, and that is normally what I also pick up um, when we look at a, a sh um, sherry cask finish. Mm. So definitely that can be, I also, now that you mentioned it, of course, the power of suggestion, there is a little bit of a peachy note or a dried fruit note mm. to it. So that is a, actually a very good one. So um, taste-wise, now be careful, but it's 50% ABV or 100% proof. Funny thing, I was looking at a video um, by Multicasking, and um, they were looking at a something which is like in the 60% ABV. And um, we, Charlie and his wife, Jean, was just drinking like it's um, not a problem. <laughs> so it seems that especially the American uh, bourbons are, and the people drinking it are used to the high ABV stuff. If you look at scotches, um, we have the scotches that are high, but most of them are like 40 to 46 to 48 percent of course you also get the uh, cost strength whiskies but most of the time will people will definitely dilute it but i was see watching um, them just chucking it as if it was nothing maybe adding a little bit water uh, later on but for me this one a little bit of water in the end we will both add a little bit of water as well but um, tasting it neat it is strong so uh, if you're not used to it, small sips, you get much more flavor out of it. So for me, the first thing that I do pick up on flavors, it is a lovely sweetness. Um, that corn note comes out. So it's a nice corn sweetness that I pick up. And I still get a little bit of that caramel note mm. on the taste as well. What did you get? Uh, first thing I got was a surprise. When I took that first sip, I went, whoa, <laughs> it is very strong. Um, uh, so yeah, that was the first thing I put in my notes is strong exclamation mark. Uh, then I said, 
it tastes like if you had to smoke a plum or if you had to smoke a bunch of raisins like in a like a smoking machine it because you get this this very plummy type taste but with a smoky alternate of course that is also possible that is the barrels that are toasted mm. so i don't know how um at the what number it was toasted i think they do from one to four four being the um highest toast level so of course that will also give a little bit of a smoky uh, after uh, taste to it mm -hmm. the f the plums i think that is also not something that i get because for me it was more into the caramel toffee notes that i pick up so it's quite interesting the two different scenarios that we pick up on uh, on the same whiskey i think that that um that smoky plum smoky raisin was definitely the the most uh, outstanding flavor to me i couldn't really get past anything else um i got a slight oakiness it's nowhere near as bad as the scotches i don't think and we've got the same yeah i also get a hint of an oak bitter note in yeah. the end but it's no it's not overpowering it's it like fades away quite quickly yeah um like there's still a bitterness that stays but it does fade uh and i said it's quite peppery quite peppery and what i also got in um <clears throat> that bitter note i associated with a little bit of a burnt caramel note mm. okay yeah i see that so that for me is actually quite nice and the more time that it goes into the glass if i go back now i do get a more and more of that vanilla note coming out it is a little bit like the evaporation of the alcohol a little bit of oxidization and now it seems to mellow out a little bit on the nose also on the the taste actually it's a little less peppery now too yeah and i think because you're also getting used to the high abv mm. so your 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 taste buds is, is not in shock anymore <laughs> and i must say every time i go back for me it is a little bit better as mm -hmm. well I so a really a nice one so as it is now i will definitely drink it without water um i think i'm quite used to the high abv if you are not used to high abv i would suggest get a spoon get some nice clean water um remember a little bit at a time it is 50 percent, so i am going to put a full teaspoon of water into it you can try maybe you can add two teaspoons of water and to see if that's going to be a better one for you yeah. to the unhealthy thing to a little bit of a shaky shaky i think i would normally have this kind of whiskey like with ice so i think with the water will probably be a little bit better for me yeah so um one teaspoon of water immediately that spiciness of the alcohol is is uh, gone it's a little bit sweeter for me on the nose i'm getting the opposite Oh, good. For me, I'm getting more of that like effervescent, like nail polishy type of smell. Oh, that is a that is a strange one. Yeah, it's a little bit sweeter for me on the taste. Oh. I do like this one. <laughs> I don't. So you prefer it neater? The taste is a lot better neater now. All I taste is oak. Okay, try this one. I do quite do get what you what you are saying. I think two teaspoons was a little bit too much water, mm. and I do get that ethanol, and I do get more woody notes on it. Mm. It's made it more bitter for me. Mm. I also think maybe I'm used to getting to drinking the uh, whiskies with a little bit of a bitter note because i don't get any of the bitter notes on this one mm. but definitely a little bit of water don't put too much water on it i will definitely buy it again mm. what do you think is there something that you would recommend for your non-alcoholic friends for non-alcoholic friends i wouldn't say so fantastic gift though um i think i don't know how much you'd be able to get it for at a, a duty-free shop where it's supposed to be sold but uh, this was about 54 euros. Oh, my son loves me. <laughs> Spending 54 <laughs> euros on his dad for a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, I know you'd appreciate it. But, um, but he's right. Um, look, 
presentation wise it is absolutely fantastic it comes with a nice silver box in it um, it's well presented and I think this is something that anybody would love to get as a father's gift mm -hmm. and of course this is something that you can also use for your infinity bottle um, once this is empty this is really a nice little bit of a decanter, uh, decanter bottle yeah. that you can use in the future. Love it. Absolutely fantastic. I will definitely recommend it for my whiskey friends. The whiskey without the E. <laughs> All the scotch drinkers. Give it a try. Let me know what you think about it. Is it something that you've tried? Is it something that you will recommend to your friends? For me, it's a definite yes. Um, and for you? Uh, maybe with some coke. <laughs> <laughs> maybe with some coke. Now, there's a thought, <laughs> thought for you. And I'm sure all my American friends are just cringing now. <laughs> but of course, you drink it the way that you like it. And it doesn't matter what other people say. With ice, I think if you do put ice into it, of course, it's going to cool down the, uh, the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's also going to... Um, bring down all the flavors, um, all the aromas, all the tasting is going to be brought down if you add too much cold water or cold ice to it. So for me, fantastic. Happy Father's Day. And I hope somebody will take up this challenge. Bring your daughter, bring your son, make a quick video, um, grab a bottle of whiskey and tell us and make a little fun video for Father's Day. So thank you very much for watching. For me, Gert Retief and... Barry Retief. And I see you next time. Cheers.